let's, let's begin with a prayer. A holy, holy, holy Father in heaven, Adonai Elohim, dear, dear Lord Yeshua, and Ruach HaKodesh, Abba, we praise thee for thy majesty, thy, thy awesomeness, thy righteousness, thy holiness. We realize how unholy and filthy we are, and we thank thee, and for ages to come, for eternity future, we will keep on thanking thee and praising thee, prostrating at the feet of thy son, Yeshua, Lord Yeshua, because of whom, through whom, we have attained salvation, and we know because of him we will be able to spend eternity with thee, Abba. We thank thee a billion times and even more, and yet it is insufficient. Lord, we thank thee for uh, the Bible, the, the scriptures, and we come before thee at, at this appointed time to help, to seek thy help and thy guidance. Please bless this session. Uh, please help us uh, understand what thou hast said through Paul in Galatians. Lord, we thank thee for the opportunities and we request thee to please bless this session in the series. And we thank thee for thy son who, who paid our debt. The debt that we owe to thee, he paid. As we studied last time in Colossians. He paid the ultimate price. So that we could have salvation free. We thank thee, we praise thee and we request thee Abba to... To accept this prayer in the name of thy only Son, our King, our Redeemer, our Shepherd, our Lord, the Messiah of Israel and the Savior of the world, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. A shalom, brothers, in the name of uh, our Lord Yeshua. Uh, we are in session number eight and Today, in this session, we would now be getting into Galatians. What uh, mostly people do is when they want to uh, prove that the law is not mandatory, that the Torah is not applicable now after Christ, they jump to Galatians. But, but through Lord's help, through the Holy Spirit's help, we would, now be, we would be getting into Galatians now in the 8th session. So we'll praise Lord for that. We thank Abba, we thank the Holy Spirit and we will jump into uh, this amazing <clears throat> epistle. So what we'll do is we'll get to Galatians chapter 2 where, where Peter and Paul, where Paul uh, uh, rebukes Peter and let's see what's going on over there. So Paul is opposing Peter uh, at Antioch. So let's just get into it. Uh, Galatians 2 verse 11. When Kepha came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from Yaakov, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when, when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy so that by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas, Barnabas was led astray. When uh, I saw that they were, acting in, they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Kepha in front of them all, you are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? We who are Jews by birth and not Gentiles know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, because by the works of the law no one will be justified. So what is happening over here? Certain men from Yaakov, from James come and they are the circumcised brothers. And uh, Peter uh, begins to, you know, draw back from the Gentiles. Now, now you see in verse uh, 14, what, what Paul is saying at the end of it. How is it that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? Now the thing here is, of course, here he's focusing on, he's talking about circumcision. But as we see... Uh, what he is going to teach, what he is going to say in this, in this epistle, it is going to be similar to what he has been saying in the other epistles and that he is not just talking about circumcision alone, not just circumcision, but the entire law. And you, you see here he is saying, how is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? Here the point, at this point it was Brit Mila, but then as we proceed further, 
he's going to talk about the entire system that the law could never by the deeds of the law we would never be justified that's what he's saying and uh, in verse 17 he says but if in seeking to be justified in christ we jews find ourselves also among the sinners doesn't that mean that christ promotes sin absolutely not you know in 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 romans uh, first three chapters especially in chapter 3 he says that everybody falls under sin even if you are a jew no matter how rigorous you may be in terms of observing the laws and and the and the legalistic aspect and no matter how much you try if we are still sinners everybody falls under the the umbrella of sin He's saying in the 18th verse, if I rebuild what I destroyed, then I really would be a lawbreaker. Now he realizes, he says that no matter how much we try, we would never be justified through the law. And there is no point trying through the law because, because that is going to make us fall short big time. Verse 19 is such a shocking verse. If you, if you sh give, say, show this, if you make a, a Jewish unbeliever read this verse, he would, he would, be, he would be shocked. He would gasp in horror. Even, even after I had accepted the Lord, I was born again, I, would, I was not able to understand verse 19. Verses like verse 19 were very confusing, especially to a Jew for whom Torah is everything. What is it saying? For through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. What does that even mean? No matter how much Paul, Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Trained by Gamaliel. He knew. He knew the things that were required. But no matter how much he tried, he knew that he is falling short. He is a sinner. He can in no way meet the requirements of the law. And, and keep, he kept on trying. But he knew he is going to fall short. That is the reason why he, what he is saying here is that I kept on trying. Through the law only, I am dying to the law. Because the law makes me realize that I cannot uh, meet its demands. I cannot satisfy its demands. And we need, that is the reason why, if, if we would have been justified through the Torah, faith, faith would have no, no point at all. There would have been no need for Yeshua to come. The law pointed to Yeshua. When Yeshua came, it became inoperative. He's saying, through the law, I died to the law. Because now, he's telling Peter, he's telling Kephine, the brothers over there, he's talking to Peter in front of everyone. He's saying that you cannot be justified through the law. And you know, there are a lot of people who say, uh, let, me, let me do one thing. Let me read till the 21st verse and then I'll show you a few verses. What he says in, in verse 20 is, I have been crucified with Christos and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in Ben Elohim who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the Torah, Christ died for nothing. The sacrifice of Yeshua, his ultimate sacrifice, is, is in vain if righteousness was through the law. Law is amazing. Law is, is, is so important. We have understood it in the previous sessions. Over and over again, you can see in the epistles, especially Paul's epistles, even in the writings of, uh, we're going to get to John, we're going to get to 1 John. I remember once somebody was saying, uh, a person uh, on YouTube was saying that those who say that the law is not mandatory have only one book in the Bible. For them, only Galatians is the book. They always keep going to Galatians. Praise Hashem that we have come in Galatians in the 8th session of this lengthy series. Don't ever stick to a certain book or don't uh, uh, confine your, your understanding, your interpretation to a particular verse. One verse theology will get you completely off track. You'll never understand things. The law and the promise are different. What is saying in verse 21 is, I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness could be gained through the Torah, the law, this law, this is Mosaic law, not, not any other law. This is the Mosaic law. For if righteousness could be gained through the law, Yeshua, Christ, the Messiah died for nothing. He's telling Peter that circumcision of the flesh does not matter. Don't stick only to the circumcision aspect. There are some people out there who say that, Circumcision is not required. Of course, it's not required now after Christ. But the observance of the law is required. No, the law is not required now. We are free to observe certain days. We are free to, to not observe them. 
It is our choice. This is the liberty and the freedom that we have in Messiah because the Messiah is the substance of what the law had in terms of days and in terms of everything. There are people who say uh, that can the majority ever be wrong? Oh, of course the majority can be wrong. There are people who ask, you know, especially some of the false teachers out there would say that uh, can the majority be wrong? Of course the majority can be wrong. But when people say that salvation is through faith alone and the law has been done away with, the law has been rendered inoperative, the majority says that. But here in this case, the majority is not wrong. The majority can be wrong many times. But here when they say that we don't need to go back to the law, they are absolutely right. You know, uh, they say that Peter said in his second epistle uh, that, that Paul's writings are very confusing. Paul's writings are very difficult to understand. No wonder they are very difficult. But they are not that difficult that people may, uh, what, what is written completely opposite is supposed to be meant. No wonder they are difficult. He says that unstable and uh, unstable people distort it to their own destruction. Let's read that verse. Peter writes in uh, Peter writes about Paul's writings and teachings to be difficult to understand in his second epistle, uh, chapter three, verses fifteen and sixteen. He says, "Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand." which ignorant and unstable people distort as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Now what some people do here is, they say that because, the, because most understand that salvation is by faith alone. So there comes the majority. So they say that many people distort, they don't understand Paul's writings. Salvation is by faith alone. And why is Peter saying this? I'm going to give you the reasons. One of the reasons obviously is what he has. What kind of verse is verse 19? See what he has written for through the law. I died to the law. If a Jew reads this who hasn't completely understood this, the, the law of liberty, he's going to gasp in horror. What happened at the council of Yerushalayim? What led to that entire discussion, that heated debate? They had to get together and decide what needs to be done. Because the Jewish legalists could not come to, come to terms with the fact that righteousness was apart from circumcision of the flesh. That circumcision of the flesh was not required. He's talking about these things. He's talking about, he, 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 he's, he's recalling. Peter is recalling what happened, happened at Antioch. He himself was guilty of that kind of behavior, of that kind of uh, understanding. While, while Peter wrote this epistle, he, 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 he recalls what happened in Galatians chapter 2. He, he knows he was uh, at the council at Yerushalayim when they came up with the four requirements that the Gentile believers would have to follow. He remembers what happened over there. Who are the unstable people? Who are ignorant people? Those who don't understand the liberty we have in the Lord. Those who don't understand that the Torah is inoperative. Those who don't understand the unconditional and the conditional aspects. Those who don't understand the unconditional covenants and the conditional covenant. Because the Mosaic covenant is a conditional covenant. There were people in, in Colossae who were, who were teaching different kinds of things. Among them some were the Jewish legalists. These are the people, the people who feel that circumcision is required, the people who feel that certain things of the law need to be observed now in this age. They are the unstable ones. And when you see Peter's writings, when you see Paul's writings, where he's saying, through the law, I died to the law. The law has been done away with. We are not under the law. Obviously, it is difficult for a Jewish brother to come to terms with that. I can say this because I myself am a Jew. Before under... I thank Abba every day. Every day I thank the God of Israel, my Lord, that he helped me understand that the Torah has been made inoperative. Because I was unstable and I was ignorant in terms of the Brit Kadasha. For I always felt that how could all of this have been done away with? And then he, he helped me understand. There are people now in this apostate age who have come from within the body. They are against the body and they are taking people under the Torah so that sin might have dominion over them. That is the truth. Not only are they uh, not unstable, these, these brothers who are doing these uh, demonic things, 
who, uh, who, who are doing this, who are giving these false teachings, they are not just ignorant. No, they are, in, they are not ignorant. They are strategically uh, teaching these, these wrong things, deliberately, twisting, playing with the world. People who, who stick only to certain verses, certain verses, sin is transgression of the law. Sin is lawlessness and then they will put lawlessness means Torahlessness and that way they, are, they uh, interpret scripture and they stick to one verse, a few verses and they avoid many verses. They are unstable people. They are ignorant. To celebrate a certain feast, uh, God given, the Lord's feast, a beautiful thing, to do that and then start bragging about it is unstable. To celebrate a certain day and then brag and then look down upon your brother who doesn't do that is unstable. To teach people that everything is clean or everything, everything can be eaten but everything that was clean can be eaten is unstable. But there's more. They are not just unstable. They are not unstable. Believe you me. They are deliberately twisting. They are leading many astray. Don't get into these teachings brothers. Don't. I'm not asking you that uh, believe whatever I'm saying. Don't believe what I'm saying. Check it in the word. And now that we are in, in Second Peter, uh, let's check out just a few verses from Second Peter. We'll be uh, we'll get back to Galatians very soon we, because we are in Second Peter. Let's check out Second Peter uh, chapter one verse nineteen. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it as a light as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. If you remember in one of the previous sessions, I said that Peter in his second epistle is talking about, about the word, the, the, the entire Bible, the Tanakh and the Brit Khadasha to be the, the ultimate authority. Here he's talking about the scripture, he's talking about the Old Testament here. Some people, you know, because what he has said here, we also have the prophetic message. Let's see what the ESV, ASV and the KJV have translated. There, uh, ESV says, we have the prophetic word. ASV says, we have the word of prophecy made more sure. And the KJV says, we have, we also, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Now this verse is pretty simple in terms of obviously it's not talking the law to be mandatory but there are some people out there who search some such word who are searching such verses in order to say that well see he's talking about the Old Testament. What he means here is he's saying that the scripture and the written word takes precedence over experiences. He says that in verses 12 to 18 he's talking about his own experience. That he had along with James and John in Matthew 17 at the transfiguration. Where he heard Abba's voice. He heard and he saw Yeshua in a glorified state. But he's saying in spite of that. What, what we have is the more sure word of prophecy. We have the entire Bible. The Bible this is. This is uh, what we need to believe and not experiences, not somebody coming and telling you, I had a dream last night or a few days back, I had a dream and Christ came and said this to me. I saw a dream last night. I saw, so I, I saw Yeshua. Now, I'm not saying a person cannot ever see Yeshua. I'm not saying that. But everybody doesn't see Yeshua. People uh, say that, yo, Yeshua came in my dream and he said this to me. Now, if Yeshua may come in a person's dream. I'm not saying that's not possible at all. But every other person you meet tells you these things. Oh, I, uh, I had this dream last night and uh, oh, I have been given a, a, a word from the Lord. No, don't get into these things. Experiences. People are into exp experiential things. What Peter is saying here in 2 Peter 1.19 is uh, the scripture, the word. Everything has to be checked, cross-verified, cross-checked with the Bible. Everything. And if it's not in harmony, it's not biblical. 
because because the word contains their we understood this you know we understood a few uh, a few sessions back because the word contains the old testament because the bible contains the old testament and the old testament contains the law the false teachers take you all the time they take you to the law no that's not how we interpret it this entire series has said before i'll say this again it is for believers it's not for un unbelievers it's not for unbelievers it's not for Jewish unbelievers to, to be more to be precise. They will never understand what's going on over here. If I were to be if I if when I evangelize to my Yehudim brothers, I don't tell them that the law has been made inoperative. They'll never understand that. Am I being am I being spineless or am I being a chameleon? No. To be able to understand these things, you need to grow in the faith, you need to spend time in the word, you need to delve into the scriptures. And then these things uh, become visible. We start understanding. But if there's a person, if there's a Jew out there, who, who there is a chance of him, who is, who is listening to you. You are evangelizing and he's, he's discussing with you. If he's discussing with you, go on, keep on trying and pray for him. Pray for him every day, for your Jewish brother. That he may recognize his own Mashiach, Nagid. But there we don't need to tell them about the law. I'm not being spineless. I'm not being a chameleon. These, these sessions are for believers only.